So in this class, we will discuss the example of design of uh, grid flow by using IS uh, 456 uh, method. So the given the data for this design problem is the grid flow has to cover a floor area of 12 meter by 18 meter. Spacing of bricks in mutually perpendicular directions is uh, 1.5 meter center to center. Of course, it is less than 2 meters as per the code. Line load of the floor is 3 kilometers per meter square. Ends are simply supported and we have to use the M20 concrete and AP405 speed for the design. Now the solution runs like this. This is the plan where uh, you can show the grid flow. So it is 12 meter by 18 meter, short end span is 12 meter, long end span is 18 meter, LY and uh, LX, you can call them as LY and LX. Now let us assume panels of 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter each here along, along this uh, uh, that is floor to 12 meter by 18 meter. If you take uh, size of the panel, that panel as 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter, we can accommodate uh, 8 uh, panels in this direction along the 12 meter uh, span direction and we can accommodate 12, 12 along this uh, 12 numbers along the 18 meter span. So totally it will be 12 into 8, 96 panels, slab panels we can have totally 96 slab panels uh, we can have in this red flow. Now let us assume the chickness, normally it is uh, taken uh, 80, 90, 100 mm like that, minimum thickness. So since it is continuous, all the uh, this thing, uh, panels are continuous, we can assume I have assumed 90 mm. Later on we are going to check whether this thickness is uh, sufficient or not. Now dead load of this uh, panel is uh, 0.09 that is 90 mm in terms of meters into density of RCC is 25 kN per meter cube. So 0.09 to 25, 2.25 kN per meter square is the dead load. Line load is given in the problem 3 kN per meter square. Finished load you can assume 1 kN per meter square. So total is 6.25 km per meter square. Factor load is 1.5 times of that, it becomes out to be 9.375 km per meter square. Now as per the IS code, uh, uh, using the table 26, so if you take the ratio of uh, this shorter spans, so here L1 and small L1 and small L X, I am taking for this small square panel, so which is uh, 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter. So the ratio becomes 1 here. Now what we are doing is we are designing the top slab here. Please note that we are designing the top slab, this portion. We are designing this portion. Top slab is this. This is the top slab. We are designing that. Now here, if you take the uh, ratio, it becomes 1 here. From the table 26, for LY by LX ratio is equal to 1 and for continuous uh, case, the coefficients alpha x and alpha y, they are equal 0 0.032. Now you can calculate the design moments uh, using the formula alpha x into W into LX square, where alpha x is this coefficient 0 0.032 into W is the factor and load 9.375 into LX is the span that is 1.5 square. So if you simplify that, you will get that point six. This will be in actually uh, this uh, value will be in kilonewton meter. So if you simplify, you will get point six seven five kilonewton meter. Uh, that is the um, maximum moment uh, for which uh, the, the top slab has panel has to be designed. Now the effective depth of the slab, the panel, panel you can say it is ninety by two minus five by two. That is half of the uh, half of the thickness. Uh, minus uh, diameter of the ball, you can assume 8 mm. So, if you assume 8 mm diameter of the ball, so you will be getting 41 mm as the effective thickness. And we have to check whether the given depth is sufficient or not. For that, we need to calculate MU lim limiting moment of resistance of that particular section, which for FCK uh, 20 and FI 405 red steel. Uh, 
So you are going to, uh, you have, you have, we have this formula from the code. So it, this you can get from the IS456. Uh, so for FI405 grade steel, uh, so this is the formula 0.13 and 358 into 20 is the grade of concrete into B is 1 meter, that is 1000 mm uh, for the slab panel into 41 square. So D is 41 here, 41 square. That value will be Newton millimeter. You can convert it into kilometer meter. Finally, it is 4.639 kilometer meter, which is greater than MU. So MU limit is greater than MU means whatever depth we have provided is sufficient. Thickness is sufficient. We call in the case of slab panel as thickness, whereas in the case of beam, we call it as depth. So now, from uh, for this value of uh, MU, from SP16, you can always compute, with a single input section, you can always uh, get the value of percentage of steel that is required from the respective table and uh, you can convert that into area. So percentage divided by 100 into B into D uh, gives the area of steel that is required. In this case, you are getting 46.7, but minimum steel you have to provide is 0.12% uh, of the uh, sectional area. So which comes out to be 1.8 mm square. So this is higher. So minimum steel is higher. So therefore, the minimum uh, we have to provide. Required is less than the minimum. So as per the code, we have to provide the minimum 1.8 mm square. We can assume, of course, for calculating the effective depth, we have assumed the 8 mm diabar. But since the reinforcement value is very very small, we can go for 6 mm diabar also. So assuming 6 mm diabar, sir. So this uh, spacing uh, between the balls we are getting 250 millimeter per center to center. So that means since it is a very small slab panel, the design is similar to the design of two-way slab. So you have to take the coefficients from the table 26 uh, of the code based on the value of the ratio L1 to Lx. Uh, you have to get the coefficient alpha x and alpha y. Here they are same because we are taking uh, Lx is equal to L Ly square uh, type of slab panels. So we are very, very, very less the moment we are getting and for that the nominal reinforcement normally we are getting. So this is uh, about the design of this top, top portion of the uh, grid flow system. Now coming to the grid beam. So these are the grid beams. So we have to design the grid beams now. Of course this is a N beam. So intermediate beam you can take it as grid beam like this. This is, this is in the form of a T section. See this is how the grid beam will be. So how to design that you will see grid beams or they are also called as ribs. Now here as per the code, diameter effective, uh, sorry, effective depth, effective depth D for the grid beam is taken uh, span divided by 25 to span divided by 20. So we are getting a span we have to take the LX value, shorter span we have to take 12,000 mm divided by 25 to 12,000 mm divided by 20. We are getting 480 to 600. So we will assume the higher value, let us say 600 mm. So since uh, design is a uh, oh, trial and error, so it varies from person to person. Whereas uh, this analysis uh, is unique, uh, so the values of bending moment here, so they remain the same. So here I am assuming 600 mm as the I am effective depth of the beam as per this uh, code of provision. So overall depth you can take uh, the effective depth plus uh, cover. Effective cover 600, uh, 550 mm you can assume so it becomes 650. So 650 mm is the overall depth. Now depth of rib. So this is the rib portion. This is the rib portion. So depth of rib becomes now <coughs> here uh, 600 this is overall depth minus 90, 600 minus, uh, 600 uh, minus 90, 510. So of course here, uh, this is uh, taken as from here. So from here, so from here to here, it is 510. This is the depth of rig for the design purpose. Now, width of rig should not be less than one fourth of uh, this 510. It comes out to be 127 mm. So let us go for 150 mm. So width of the rib will assume 150 mm. The so depth of the rib is 510 mm. So we have to keep that in mind. Now this is the cross section of the grid floor. Now the center to center. See here, center to center of this grid beam uh, is actually so 1.5 meter is from center to center. So between this edge to edge here. It is 1.5 minus 0.15, that is 150 mm. So it comes out to be 
meter. That's what I have written uh, here. So 96 panels. Totally there are 96 panels here. Turn into uh, turn into eight. Uh, 96 panels on there of size 1.35 meter by 3.5 meter with depth 560 mm here. So here uh, overall depth. So from here, here to here, uh, it is uh, 560. Please note here. So this is effective depth of bridge. This is overall depth of bridge. 560 mm is overall depth. 510 is the effective depth. So overall depth you are going to take for calculating the self -age. So here, uh, the thing is, we have to take the weight of this slab portion. This slab portion, actually this is now 1.35 meter on either direction. So that is why the self weight of the grid flow now we have to take, calculate now. So we, to calculate that what we have to do, we have to take the, well, what we are going to do normally here is, we are going to consider the entire slab as a solid slab. So for the solid slab, uh, we have to calculate the self weight. From that we have to deduct, we have to subtract this uh, four portion. So because there is no concrete here, so we have to deduct uh, the uh, portion, uh, 96 uh, slab parent portion from that uh, total solid slab. So from the total uh, solid slab, we are deducting the weight of this four portions. So that is, it comes out to be, so self weight of red floor comes out to be, 0.65 that is more on that into 12 into 18 which is the number of uh, which is nothing but the die area of the total uh, floor slab that minus uh, we have to take here so this is the portion opening is this much 1.25 meter 1.25 meter there are 96 panels of that type into 0.56 so this rib portion we have to deduct please note that we have to deduct that so we are going to get into of course density. Density of concrete uh, is in kilometers per uh, meter cube. Density of RCC 25 kilometers per meter cube. So this is the weight of this solid slab throughout minus weight of those four portions. So we are going to get the weight in terms of concentrated load 1060.56. That should be converted to UDL now. Because when you are when you are calculating moment side, it will you have to get the value of load in UDM because it's a beam. So self weight per unit area now if you calculate, that is in terms of concentrated load, total load you are getting 1060.56 divided by the floor area 20 to 18 meter square gives you the uh, self weight per unit area which is 4.91 kilometer per meter square. Now for this we have to assume once again the floor load of 1 km per meter square and line load of 3 km per meter square. So the total load becomes 4.91 plus 1 plus 3, 8.91 km per meter square. Design load will be 1.5 times of that, which comes out to be 1.5 into 8.91, that is 13.365 km per meter square. Now the factor load per meter length of the beam, since the spacing is 1.5 meters, so we have to we have to multiply this uh, area load by the spacing between the beams. So 1.5 meter is the spacing. This is the spacing. So spacing multiplied by the area load gives the UDL. So 20.04 kN per meter. That is the value of uh, the factor load per meter length of the beam, which is used uh, to calculate the maximum moments in either directions. In this case, Ly by Lx, uh, it is 18 by 12. That is 1.5. So, since we are going to assume all the four edges as discontinuous edges because uh, he has given simply supported, the edges are simply supported. So, therefore, uh, for MI by is equal to 18 by 12, that is 1.5. And for four edges discontinuous, from table once again, from table 26, uh, IS 4.6, uh, the coefficients, moment coefficients are alpha x is uh, 0 0.089. Alpha y is 0 0.056 we have got. Now from these uh, we have to calculate the moment uh, coefficient moment maximum uh, bending moment uh, value. So maximum bending moment value for the alpha x and alpha y you can get like this. So we can continue with that. So Mx design moments we call them as design moments for that uh, rib. So design moments will be equal to mx will be equal to, we are getting mx will be equal to alpha x into wu into lx square. 
So that is Mx. So alpha x is 0 0.089. Change it from the table into W is 20.04 uh, kilonewton per meter into Lx. We have to take 12. 12 means is Lx value. So we are going to have this. This value will be in kilonewton meter. So this value we are going to get that value as 256.94 kilonewton meter. 256.94 kilonewton meter. This is the maximum magnetic moment in the X direction along the shorter span for which uh, the reinforcement has to be designed. And similarly, along the longer span, MY is alpha Y into W into LX square only. So alpha Y here is uh, 0.056 as per the table into 20.04 uh, into, of course, one square. Once again, this value will be in kilometer meter. So if you simplify this, you will get uh, uh, 161.66. So 161.66 kilonewton meter. So these are the design moments for the rib <coughs> uh, portion. Of course, for the uh, T beam. So for the T beam, uh, these are the design moments. Now, next step is to fix the dimensions of the T-beam, calculate the self weight of the T-beam and all and neutral axis. Now the design procedure is similar to the design of T-beam in RCC we have studied. So neutral axis, all those things uh, we have to fix or assume. Then we have to calculate the required uh, reinforcement. Then finally uh, we can detail the reinforcement. So in the next video, the remaining design will be continued.